May I have your attention, please? Good evening. You're listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. We thank you for tuning in and hope you enjoy another exciting episode of our show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 2020. It's Straight Talk with Dana Mark back for season six, and we're about to get it in. As always, it's the six man Dean Geronimo, and I'm in the studio from NJ to NC with my right hand man, Mark Lee. So, Mark, tell me what's good in your neck of the woods, my brother. Hey, you know, things are keeping busy, rolling along as always. We've had a very exciting, uh, couple of weeks. I know that uh, you probably did something exciting for New Year's Eve. Yours truly was down at the <laughs> beach of North Carolina. My brother and my dad had invited me to come down there and spend some time with them and my nephews, and I went down there and had about uh, two and a half, three days, definitely enjoyed myself. As my aunt told me, you can't go to the beach without sticking your toes in the water. So I followed orders oh, and yeah, stuck my toes in those water. You know, it was a little bit on the chilly side, but I had to stick my toes in the water, collect a couple of seashells, as soon as I got there, my nephews, who are 10 and 11, were already in the midst of a football game. So they pulled the old man, you know, put, <laughs> pushed it up near 60. They still put me, pulled me into a game, and I still managed to hold a little bit of my own. As a matter of fact, our team, the team I was playing on, managed to pull out the victory. So that was a good thing. Nice. So I managed to pull out a victory, you know, did a couple of end rounds, did a couple of other little trick plays in here and there, and uh, had some good players on my team. So I was able to... Uh, pull out that victory and that was a good thing and speaking of uh sports victories i gotta say that i'm very happy over the weekend because uh i think i mentioned on this show a couple times i am a diehard minnesota vikings fan and uh mm-hmm. yeah it was a controversial push off call and i'm not gonna say that he did push off but at the end of the day <laughs> it's what counts as whether it's called or not and it was not called so we walked away with a victory. We got another tough game. I mean, a real tough match against San Francisco. But at least we got out of round one in the wild card round, knocked off those uh, New Orleans to, um, Saints and, you know, got them over home, at home, breathing yeah, in, crying about yeah. what could have been, should have been, and would have been. But, you know, a lot of the major players that folks always look at are nowhere to be found. There is no uh, Dex Prescott from Dallas. Tom Brady is sitting at mm-hmm. home now. Uh, Drew Brees is sitting at home now. So a lot of top quarterbacks are sitting at home right now. So I was quite pleased with that victory by the Minnesota Vikings. Looking forward to seeing what they can do, if anything. But I'm going to keep my faith with the uh, San Francisco 49ers. And also on that sports tip, we had a victory of my uh, Marquette Warriors. That's what they were when I was Okay. They are now the Golden Eagles, and they knocked off Villanova on uh, Saturday uh, afternoon, so you know I was quite happy with that result as well. So sat there and got to see my alma mater knock off a top ten team. They are not ranked at the moment, at least I haven't checked the rankings so far. They've had a couple of key losses, so they might not even be ranked. But I was just pleased with knocking off the top ten team, and hopefully we'll get a couple of more victories. <laughs> Show folks that we're real, because that kid Marcus Howard is no joke. As my barber said, because I was visiting my barber on the day that we played him on that Saturday. And my barber said he got ice waters in his veins. I mean, he's going to take that wow. shot and he's an opener. And, if you, and it, it, he might be at any point of the three-point line, and he'll also drive on you. So he is not afraid to test the waters and uh, fire, it, fire, it, fire it at you big time. So I was, uh, like I said, quite pleased with that victory and things of that nature. And, of course, as you know, always we got things happening at the Haytai Heritage Center. The church met on both Sundays on the uh, uh, day after Christmas. Um, there was a Kwanzaa celebration there. A lot of people were there, met some old friends, met some new friends, talked to some people about getting on the show, and I'm hoping to have them on in uh, 2020. So that Kwanzaa celebration was the day after Christmas and on uh, Sunday, last Sunday. So about uh, eight days ago, I attended a Kwanzaa celebration in Raleigh. There was a lot about social justice and what we can do in our economy. And that featured one of our past guests. And Gaza Laughing House Sr. was uh, the person mm-hmm. that uh, was at his location, the Fruit of Labor Cultural Center. So uh, my friend Telly, who we've also had on the show, along with his wife Aya, they got me over there to Raleigh. We enjoyed some good food, 
some good conversation and met a couple of folks that got a music label over there in Raleigh. So interested to find out more about what they got going on and possibly having them on the podcast as well. You know, I'm always looking for good stories for us while I'm out and about. So that's the good news in terms of the bad news. You know, we got crazy people still in the White House, folks talking about impeachment, you know, and they're trying to see what they're going to impeach him or uh, not impeach him. It's got to go before the Senate. They're having all these conversations going on. And in the midst of all of that, you know, just just out of the blue, it wasn't planned. You know it couldn't have been planned, Dean. Just out of the blue, he decided to go and assassinate somebody from uh, another country that is on our enemy list. But, you know, that was just coincidence. It didn't happen that it happened during the impeachment process is when he did it. You know, that just was a coincidence. So at least that's what they would have us believe, that that was just a coincidence that that happened. You know what? I I don't put anything past this one. You know, I, I won't say his name. I call him Orange Julius, man, because this guy is very different. <laughs> And he he's just um, just one of those people that you just shake your head and say, "Damn, how can somebody be that damn stupid?" And, and it makes you wonder, you know. And but at the same time, hey man, you can't second guess anyone, you know. My parents, my mom used to say, "You can't fix stupid." No matter what it is, stupid is going to be what stupid is going to be. And unfortunately, we all are stuck in the middle of the antics. You know what I mean? Like, at some point, man, somebody has to pull his coattail. Like, damn, what is Congress doing? Y'all are, y'all are just letting this crazy stuff slide through? Well, you know what? It's time to vote y'all the hell out of here, too. Because y'all are allowing yep. this madness to happen. You're putting all of us at risk because you're in your feelings. Man, get out of your feelings, man. Stop being, don't be that guy that's so soft-hearted that you think, you know, everything is, like, nobody cares about you, really. And you, you started all of this simple stuff. If you had shut up and just gone ahead and taken the oath, we wouldn't have half of it. I know we would still have some of it because it's due to dumb. But, you know, what do you want from us? What really do you want from us? But we need to get him the hell out of there. Yeah, he's so, got to get the hell folks, out of there. But <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got to get him out of there. But I'm also worried because, like I said, I went on that beat trip. One of uh, my uh, dad's... Uh, lady friends, relatives, I believe it's her uh, daughter-in-law, travels the world and talks to people all over the world. So she had just recently come back from a trip where she had hit the West Coast, she had hit the uh, round Texas, she had hit other parts of the country. And what she told me and other members of the family, and this is actually a young white woman, is that she is afraid that we are heading for a second term of the madman because when she talks to people, she heard a lot of people expressing support for this madman. So, like I said, that just uh, kind of puts uh, some fear in your heart and just, as you said, makes you know that we've got to get out there and make sure that these kind of speculations do not happen. And the only way we can stop it from happening is to, you know, come up with a strong candidate, have people that will endorse whoever the candidate is and come behind them. That's one of the reasons I'm going to give, um, and I thought he was a good candidate early on, but I'm going to give Julian Castro some credit because Julian Castro dropped out of the race, but Julian Castro has also already put his uh, clout behind a candidate that he feels is going to be the candidate of the party. So he's already come out today and announced his endorsement of Elizabeth Warren. So like I said, you know, if Elizabeth doesn't win it, hopefully Julian will come out with a candidate that he uh, can support, whether it's Biden or whether it's whoever. But if you listen to some of the talking points that Julian Castro had and some of the talking points of Elizabeth Warren, they were very similar talking points. They even had similar views about reparations and about um, some of the educational things and even some of the things that related to the Latin American community. So I can definitely see where he would come out with an endorsement for Elizabeth. And like I said, if you're going to pull out, I don't want you sitting on the sidelines talking about him and hawing 
I could have done this, I could have done that. You know, I prefer somebody like Julian Castro that's going to put their mouth behind one of the horses. I mean, if it's a five-horse race, right. or six-horse race, however many horses it is, I want you to come out and tell us who you're backing and put your money and your clout behind whoever you're backing. And that's what it seems like Mr. Castro is doing. Well, that's better That's better than most, man. So, like I said, it's going to heat up around about the summertime. We'll find out who is, is serious about their intentions, and they'll have some type of platform and, and where they would like to see this country go, you know, not just, oh, I'm running for president. On what? On, what do you mean on what? You know, like, come on, you got to get better than that. We just can't vote for you just because you said you're going to run. You got to have something worthwhile that, that we're going to be able to get behind, support, and endorse. And when we do that, I think that we'll, we'll be, we still have work to do because it's going to take a little time, but we will be in a better place than we are now. We have too many things, and I've said it before, we have too many things going on that our own people need here in this country, in these United States, than to be going over there, picking fights and, and assassinating folks, man. You know, you want to say like the old folks should say, get your ass back over here, man. We got we got things going on over here. Sit down, shut up. And then, you know, maybe we can get something done. But if you're going to be over there acting like a pure fool, we might not be able to accomplish what we want to because you are hindering whatever progress that we are trying to get done. So, you know, I, I pray that something changes for the better because there's just too much of the simple stuff going on right now, man. Way too much of the simple stuff going on. You're absolutely right about that. I mean, all you got to do is we can talk about the stuff that's happening right here in Durham, North Carolina. As a matter of fact, just recently, we had a total of 171 families temporarily moved from one of our housing projects because of carbon monoxide concerns. So that's what's going on right here in our neck of the woods. Yes, that's right. We had residents that had to be moved because of the carbon monoxide stuff that is going on. As a matter of fact, they said it in Durham, most of our public housing projects, uh, unlike Raleigh and some of the other surrounding cities, are having very serious issues with carbon monoxide and other things that cause problems. And that's going on right here in Durham in our public housing area. So it says a series of potential carbon monoxide poisoning reported at, Duke, at McDougal Terrace have prompted community-wide inspections and evacuations, but the fire department says there is no evidence because apparently there was a death of two infants on uh, November and December, and that's where this whole thing came out of was, this, I guess, the investigation of those deaths and everything, even though now they're claiming that that was not the cause, even though they are acknowledging that there are problems in those communities and are trying to find a way, like I said, they put people in some temporary housing, and uh, like they're trying to investigate and find out what's going on with this uh elevated levels of carbon monoxide that are going on. So that's definitely happening right here in the Durham community. I'm curious, and I know we just got the doorbell, but I'm I'm curious, is it really carbon monoxide or is we want you to move so we can tear this stuff down and build something else that's going to generate some more money? That's just my brain running and racing. Hey, you know, they will oftentimes take things away from us for a variety of reasons. I mean, we know what happened mm -hmm. in the old area of Haytown, which is not that far from uh, McDougal Terrace, when they rammed the highway right through it. And you were right. A lot of people know that folks sold their land in order to have what was a historically black neighborhood basically eliminated so that folks could have the highway and we could have the first wave or maybe even the second or third wave, depending on how you want to look at history, but definitely one of the waves of gentrification. Of course, we're in another wave of gentrification right now. As a matter of fact, a good friend of mine, Carl Kenny, came to the church uh, that meets at Haytai, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before, and he met with one of our, one of the ministers.